Four teenagers named Takoro, Hiroshi, Mika, and Takeshi decide to break into an abandoned mansion in the outskirts to investigate it as a rumor has been going around that a monster dwells within it. Of course, being young and having nothing better to do, they think going somewhere literally risking their lives going towards a monster rather than away from it is a good pastime activity. Each character has a different hair color in the latest iteration which makes it easy to distinguish between the characters. Takeshi, the blonde haired boy, repeatedly mentions how it's a bad idea and they should leave with the rest of the group. Takuro, the red haired boy, and Hiroshi, the silver haired boy, peer pressuring Takeshi on how there is no such thing as monster. When a sound is heard from a different room, when Hiroshi doesn't waste any time leaving the group to investigate the source of the sound. Going to the kitchen, Hiroshi finds a broken plate, quickly going back to his friends not to see them anywhere. Confused how an abandoned mansion could possibly have full furnishing of the kitchen and be in such immaculate condition, he thinks if this rumored monster actually exists, who is the culprit of making his friends disappear. Trying different doors, Hiroshi goes through an open one when he sees the shadow of a large humanoid entity pass through a foggy glass door, which happens to be locked as well. Exploring the mansion, Hiroshi soon finds Takeshi cowering in a closet, shivering as if he's seen a ghost. Trying to get a word out of a frightened Takeshi, he seems shell-shocked, unable to utter as much of a word. Hiroshi, in search of others, tries to take Takeshi with him but leaves him behind in the closet as he seems to be scared to even move. As Hiroshi goes to find the others, he comes across a large violet-colored oni or a demonic being chasing after him in a hostile manner, not saying a word, having a twisted humanoid face which terrifies Hiroshi who outruns this monster. Hiroshi going around the mansion to get all of his friends together in order to escape, seeing it for himself that monsters do actually exist, he suddenly gets approached by an anxious and scared Takoro who confirms with Hiroshi if what they saw was real or not. Takoro carries on that all the exits are shut which gives him the bright idea to split up in order to find ways to leave this cursed mansion more efficiently but not necessarily more safely. Going through the mansion some more, Hiroshi finds a cowering Mika in one of the bedrooms. Mika explains that she and the group got separated with her staying in the room to hide from the monster. Hiroshi insists of taking Mika with him as it would be better to stick together but Mika who's terrified decides to stay in the safe place until Hiroshi finds an exit before she even takes as much of a step. As Hiroshi goes on to find a way out and rescue his friends, he comes across a hidden room behind a bookshelf that has a jail cell, which makes him think of the reasons why a cell would be in this abandoned mansion. Could it be that a scientist carried on experiments that backfired? Could it be that the owner of the mansion was aware of this monster and built a cell for it to keep it detained before things went haywire? Or could this hidden room just be a gimmick in the game for no contribution to the story whatsoever? As Hiroshi explores the cell to find the key to open the locked doors, the Ao Oni, translated directly to Blue Demon, who is actually more violet, comes to the room, staring at Hiroshi, trying really hard to break the door and get to him but eventually gives up and leaves knowing the cell is very secure, as if it had experienced being in a cell before itself. Hiroshi carefully leaves the room, ensuring that the Oni is nowhere to be seen, when he hears the scream of Mika all of a sudden, which clearly depicts why staying alone in a room was not such a good idea. As Hiroshi goes to the bedroom to check on Mika, he comes to the horrifying scene of the Oni kneeling above Mika's body, moving in a fashion as if eating Mika. Horrified to the scene, Hiroshi soon runs away with the Oni turning around and chasing after him in a swift motion. Extremely saddened by this event, thinking he lost a friend, he carries on his search to find a way out when he sees Mika well and alive in another side of the mansion. Confused to how this could be, he looks at Mika in confusion when she suddenly transforms into the same demonic being, only having one identifiable difference her hair. This clearly displays that the Oni who was chasing after the group was once a human as well who somehow turned into this grotesque monster. Maybe this explains to some degree why there was a jail cell in a hidden room. My theory is that whoever lived in this mansion was possibly experimenting on humans, hence why he created a hidden cell room to hide his subjects from the eye of the public, which led to the monster escaping, leading to people believe the mansion is abandoned while in fact a monster or monsters lived in it. 
This also explains why the mansion is fully furnished, as if people still live here, as otherwise whoever would abandon the mansion or leave would take their belongings with them. Escaping the monster Mika, Hiroshi comes across a room which has a rope which could fortify this tragic theory. As the scientist or the mansion owner couldn't cope with turning into an oni, he wanted to stop it but by then it was already too late. The weather outside changing, now raining heavily and being nighttime, Hiroshi feeling responsible for his friends tries to find an exit and lead them to safety, all while trying to evade the violet bald monster and the recently turned Mika. After some time, lighting the candles, Hiroshi finds Takeshi, who is hiding in the shadows being extremely terrified. At the same time, he feels immense guilt for being the one who suggested to the group to come to the mansion and investigate paranormal entities, not being able to face Hiroshi and running away, feeling ashamed. Hiroshi trying to stop him as there's no time for this kind of drama as their lives are at stake. He gives up as Takeshi seems very fast and runs away. Unfortunately, the immense guilt Takeshi feels leads to a tragedy, with him losing his life, not being able to cope with it, especially knowing all of his friends will probably die here and get doomed to turn and live the rest of their cursed lives as hideous and horrifying monsters. Despite the Oni not being the culprit of Takeshi dying, he turns into an Oni anyway, displaying that this mansion is cursed, turning any person who dies in it into a violet monster. Now having to evade three Onis, with two of his friends turned into Two, Hiroshi tries to rescue the last of his friends, Takoro, and get out of this haunted place. Soon Hiroshi finds Takoro hiding in a closet as he twisted his ankle, taking shelter as he would only risk his life more moving with a twisted ankle unless an exit opens. Hiroshi goes on to find a way out, possibly finding the keys to the exit doors. Finally, Hiroshi finds a key to a hidden room which leads to an underground tunnel with a ladder leading to the outside. Happy that he found a way to leave, he goes back to Takoro to take him to this hidden path in order to leave. Assisting Takoro to move, going to the hidden path, they come to the unfortunate sight of the Oni, blocking the way while savagely eating the ladder, sabotaging their way out. As both decide to run, due to his twisted ankle, Takoro falls behind, with the Oni seemingly taking him, but something that we don't see as of yet. Overcome with a sense of despair and impending doom, Hiroshi being left on his own decides to leave this cursed place once and for all. Finding an entry to a secret part of the mansion he's never seen before, he comes across an altar which acts as a cover to another secret part of the mansion. In this underground part of the mansion, he finds several hospital beds with curtains which clearly depict that some sort of experiment was carried on in here. This dungeon-like place also seems to have jail cells which could mean that the test subjects were kept here not to escape or be seen by anyone. Leaving the secret horrifying on the ground, Hiroshi gets attacked by another type of monster, Fuwati or the Blockman Oni, a different type of monster with the same violet color. This reveals that there were more people that were experimented on in here, possibly with the last one of them turning into the Ao Oni, while the previous version turned into different types of monsters, such as Fuwati or the Blockman Oni. These test subjects seem to be the oldest ones as they were left in the deepest and darkest parts of the mansion, left to rot on their own, while a newer jail cell room was designed in the upper floors, closer and more accessible to study. The nature of the experiment could also be something chemical or most likely airborne, hence why whoever dies in this mansion already turns into an oni, which could mean the chemicals could be already running in Hiroshi's blood, meaning when he dies he will also turn into an oni. Going further down, this theory of mine seems to become more plausible, as there is a large cell room full of different types of violet onis, ones who seemingly weren't perfected to such a degree of the Ao oni on the surface. These onis share resemblance but are deformed and misshaped, with some of them even having tentacles, multiple eyes, being completely distorted or simply being a blob. As Hiroshi watches these poor monsters in shock, he notices that the gate to their cell is actually open when one gets out slowly, getting to Hiroshi, when he rushes towards the door which is unfortunately jammed. However, after some tries, he manages to open the door and leave. After some time getting back into the same jail cell room, he comes to the scene of it being completely empty with all the Onis freed and out of their confinement. That's when Takoro appears out of the blue, saying he actually managed surviving and escaping 
the Oni back in the secret tunnel, asking Hiroshi to take him with him. He agrees and both go on to leave this Oni-riddled mansion. As they approach the exit, the survivor Takoro turns out to be an Oni in disguise, which displays their intuition and intelligence, able to even deceive their victims to easily attack them. Maybe they even have the consciousness and memories of their victims or the people that they used to be, using that in their advantage to trick their victim. Escaping a turn Takoro, knowing he needs to leave as all of his friends are gone already, he manages to leave running with all of his might, running in a rainy and dark weather with his instincts kicking in, not even stopping for a split second to catch his breath as he knows the Oni Takoro is on his tail. He doesn't stop until he reaches the nearest town, not even looking behind until he sees actual people, seeing how the Onis probably stopped following him as he passed the mansion's gate. As time passes on, the extra the extreme trauma he experienced causes him to forget what happened in the mansion, with Takoro and his friends still missing, struggling to remember it perfectly. Despite this group of friends perishing and turning into monsters, more and more curious people go to the mansion to investigate the rumored monsters, also coming to these demons who see through walls as they detect the temperature difference and can easily detect human presences. Now something I found interesting in the game is that there are multiple demons in the mansion and not just one. There are anime and apparently live action adaptations of this game, which I haven't seen any of. Therefore, the plot might be actually explained in them, but according to what we see in the game, being the sixth version, the multiple versions of the Ao Oni depicts that there was some sort of progression to achieve the ideal Ao Oni, even though it is still distorted. You might say there is no evidence of experimentation whatsoever, but the presence of hidden rooms containing jail cells and medical beds display that whoever designed this mansion and its hidden rooms had sinister intentions that they wanted to keep secret from the general public or even their guests. Also the progression of these demons into fully formed almost perfect humanoid onis display a series of progress, with earlier versions being less than ideal with no limbs onto a fully humanoid demon who can even mimic humans and use their memories in their advantage to prey on their victims. Also the fact whoever dies in the mansion arises as an oni displays how there is some sort of inhalant present, transforming anyone dying into an oni. You could also say that there is a curse that turns the dead into Onis, which could be the case if there was some sort of evidence. The presence of jail cells also refutes a curse being present, as a curse could be acute, quickly turning everyone into Onis, or if the people in the mansion would notice the first deceased person turning into an Oni, they would run away rather than staying in and building jail cells to observe them. It all seems as if it was intentional, keeping them in the jail cells to observe and study them. Alright folks, that's about it for this video. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic day.